Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to sketch this crap thing and talk about this color, Sodalite Genuine, one of the most granulating watercolors that I know. This is the sketch that I'm going to paint. This is actually a photo that I've taken a few months ago at the Natural History Museum here in Singapore. And the sketchbook that I'll be using today is this spiralbound sketchbook made by St. Louis Art Supply. If you guys want to follow along, you can go download the photo. The link is in the video description below. So I'm going to leave life dangerously by drawing straight with ink. Let me just draw the leg on the left side first. Now this pen that I'm using, this is the Pelican M200 fountain pen. One of my favorite pens for sketching because it can hold a lot of ink. I mean, the body here, it's the ink reservoir. So I started by drawing this leg here. Oops, I think I made a mistake. This one, this part here should be a bit shorter. I can't really talk and draw at the same time. Anyway, I drew this leg first because this is the longest leg. And after I fit the longest leg in, I should be able to fit the whole crap thing in on this page. I mean, okay, this is the body. So when drawing something like this, or when drawing something that you have not seen before, it would be good to actually slow down and really observe. Draw slowly. Spend a lot of time observing your subject. Actually spend more time observing your subject than what you are sketching. That way your sketch will be more accurate. And if you guys want to check out more drawing tutorial, do visit my YouTube playlist. I have a lot of free tutorials there that I have created um, over the last five, six years. Okay, so this crap thing has, a, has an interesting head. It's like this. It appears to have a snout with a very sharp uh, forehead like this. I'm not sure where the eyes are actually. So the shell is here. Now one thing I really like about this pen is if you draw lightly, you can get uh, thin lines, at least with this fountain pen name. I think I drew the shell a bit too small. Okay, the mouth part here, this really is a bit challenging. It's actually a bit difficult to see the details from the photo that I have taken. I think there is this um, thing coming out here. So that's uh, one thing when drawing with photographs. Um, the photo will not be able to capture the shadow details uh, in detail compared to what your eye can see. So usually when you draw, I mean, when you take a photo, especially when there is strong contrast, when there is strong light and shadows, the shadows uh, can actually, the blacks can actually just merge together. Okay, so where am I now? Um, let me just draw the bottom here for the other pincer. Okay, this part here it's a bit challenging. When drawing this pencil, I need to compare it to the pencil on the left side to make sure that 
they are aligned properly. There's a shell here. And this crab thing has a lot of texture on it. The surface has a lot of tiny little bumps. Okay, so the angle for this pincer will go down to the left side. And I want to draw the little bumps. Probably should have zoomed in uh, much earlier. Okay, I made a mistake here again because I'm talking. But it doesn't uh, really matter because if you have not seen this crap thing before, you probably don't know whether or not I'm drawing it accurately. Okay, it's very fun. I like the organic shape of this crap thing. Um, there is this under part here. Seems to be another piece of something here. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Okay, so I'm now left with the last leg. Now, am I going to run out of space here? Mm, it looks like I may actually run out of space here, so I'm going to cheat a bit by curving the leg a bit more so that it can fit onto the pitch. So that's the good thing with sketching or making art. You can use your own artistic impression and cheat. Okay, now I just need to add some textures onto the crap. And this body here is actually curved like this. So maybe I can draw some lines, very thin lines to sort of convey the curve of the body. Okay, add some more textures here. Yep, I definitely drew the shell a bit too small. The ink should be dry. The ink that's in the pen, it's sketch ink, it's waterproof and dry. And now let's paint. I already squeezed out the paint from the tube. By the way, soda like genuine, it's best used from the tube. You can certainly squeeze it into a pen and have it dry and reactivate with water. But I found out that over time, the paint will actually solidify until it's so hot that it's difficult to re-wet. So it's best used straight from the tube. Now this, um, this crap thing, or this exhibit in the museum, um, there are a lot of, um, there were a lot of light sources. So I have to just use one light source to, so, so as to create the right shadow. If there are too many light sources, there will be a lot of shadows. And it's going to look um, confusing with all those shadows. So I'm going to have one uh, shadow coming from the back of the crab instead of painting all the shadows that I see. And hopefully I can get the illusion of the shadow uh, right. And later on when all this is dry, I'm just going to create the white spots or the white markings with my white gel pen. It's easier that way. 
I guess another way you can paint this crap thing is to apply masking fluid for the highlights for the white areas. But um, white gel pen, it's more convenient for me. Okay, so this is a very beautiful color. And if you apply a lot of water, you can get uh, very uh, light washes. And if you apply a lot of paint, you can get really dark colors, like something that's close to black. Which makes this color, Soda Light Genuine, a wonderful color that you can use for painting, um, for practicing tonal uh, values. So what I'm doing here is basically painting the first wash. Later on, I will paint the second and maybe the third wash to create more contrast. I am leaving certain parts uh, white. Okay. And for certain parts, I'm using a lot of water because when it's wet, I may actually, I can actually charge in more colors. For example, here, this part is still wet, and this lake, this part here, um, certain areas are really dark. So when it's still wet, I can charge in the colors to have the colors spread out. And let's go back to painting the shadows. Wow, well, I'm not sure. There are three light sources, so I'm not exactly sure if I can get the shadows right. So this one is here. Okay, I realized for my sketch, I made a mistake here. See this pincer here? It should be aligned at the same level as this pincer on the right side. But uh, unless you compare it with a photograph, you will not be able to tell that it's inaccurate, that it's not accurate. Okay, um, this part here is the challenging part. So I think the shadow is like this. I hope it's like that. Let's paint the shadow for the pincer. Okay, this looks all right. And now we just have to wait for this to dry before we paint the second layer. Let me just charge in some extra colors here. The first wash has already dried, so let's paint the second wash to make the darker areas, well, darker. This paper um, that's in the sketchbook, uh, it's 25% cotton paper. There's no mention of the brand, but it's supposed to be made in Italy, so chances are it's probably Fabriano, more specifically Fabriano Studio, which uses 25% cotton paper. Okay, so you can see Soda Light, it can be a very dark color. Shell. Let's paint it much darker. Here as well. And the uh, part here. And the underside of this shell here.
Okay, I'm almost done. Just need to add some sh some extra contrast. I was actually trying to say uh, shadow details, but I already painted the shadows, so it's extra contrast. Okay, now for certain areas, I'm going to I'm going to clean my brush first and get some clean water so that I can fade some of the some of the edges to make the edges soft. If you have only hard edges, your sketch is going to look very stylized. Okay, I think I may need to paint the this part here, make it much darker. Because if I squint my eyes, it looks a bit darker. Now this crap thing would look lovely in orange but <laughs> um, today's showcase is actually for soda light genuine so anyway you can paint with any color you like and I can use the brush to add texture as well Okay, so I think this is pretty much done. Let's wait for this to dry. And now let's add some finishing touches. So this is how Soda Light Genuine looks on their sketch. Soda Light Genuine is one of my favorite colors when it comes to creating tonal studies or for quick monotone sketches. Some other colors that I like to use are Sumi Ink and also um, what's the other one? Uh, Sepia and also Graphite. For sepia, you won't be able to get like really uh, dark uh, tones or values like this. But for soda like genuine, it's very easy. You just use concentrated paint and you can get something really dark. Almost as close to black as it can be. And it works really well on this watercolor. You can see the beautiful granulation on this cold press paper. And I really like how the color um, fades or transition from light to dark. It's very beautiful. This is one of the most granulating colors from Daniel Smith. So this is a very beautiful color. The only caveat is it's best to use it from the tube rather than squeeze it onto the pan because the paint will dry back into a rock if you give it enough time. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.